There's one missing. There's one missing. What kind of equation could I craft that would get me out of not only the natural numbers, not only the integers, not only the rational numbers, even out of the real numbers? Raph. I'll let someone say. Okay, yeah. X squared plus one equals to zero. Okay. This will be, I mean, they're all just examples, right? X squared plus one equals zero. Now, using the same kinds of rules and, and operations to get my solution from here to here, right? My solution to this is going to be, and we're going to use two lines here, okay? So try and squeeze it in. Is going to be, firstly, plus or minus the square root of, well, that one's going to come over the other side, which leaves me with negative one. And then I take the square root, okay? Now, this number is not real. You can't measure it. You can't say, unlike the square root of five, which is like, you know, that distance, it's between two and three. This is not between any numbers that we know about up here, right? Unlike, you know, uh, this is just these numbers facing another direction. Um, this is just between whole numbers. And this is, again, between, whole, between rational numbers. But this guy's not between any of the numbers you know about, right? You can't place him on the number line. So we call him a whole other thing. We use an I to indicate imaginary. We call these imaginary numbers. Now I'm going to talk on Wednesday about why they're called imaginary numbers. As it turns out, that is a terrible name for those numbers. Uh, they are just as real as the real numbers, but uh, it's what we've got. So, well, yes, <laughs> it's real exactly. and it is real. So I'll talk more about that on Wednesday. This set of numbers, this set of numbers here, are what we talk about when we mean the complex numbers. They are more than just the real numbers. They are bigger than that. Now, here's what's really profound, and I'll answer this question before okay. I do it. Yeah, no, yeah? What's your oh, yeah, um, I was just wondering if they're part of complex numbers, are there other numbers that are not Yes, yes, sir. Oh, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Now, here's the really, really cool thing. This is why my table has this many rows and no more. If what you're doing is trying to arrive at numbers by means of algebra and counting numbers, if these are your building blocks and these are your building tools, okay, this complex numbers, these are the end of the line. There is no other kind of number that you can combine plus, minus, times, divide, and counting numbers. There's nothing else you can make out of this. In fact, there's this big, you can look it up later, um, important theorem in mathematics called the fundamental theorem of algebra. You know something's really a big deal when they say fundamental. What it states is that any polynomial, so you see, these are all polynomials. I mean, admittedly, these are very simple ones. They're just linear. But I could make them comp more complicated if I want to. Any polynomial with complex coefficients. So that's these numbers in here, right? these numbers at the front. Any polynomial with complex coefficients, it will only have complex roots. This is the end of the line. Unlike every other kind of number. For instance, you can make an equation with just counting numbers. But its solutions are not counting numbers, right? They might be rational numbers, right? You can make a, uh, an equation with irrational numbers, right? And its solutions will not be rational numbers. They'll be something else. But once you get to complex numbers, you can't make anything more, right? Uh, there's another fancy phrase for this. Firstly, by the way, all of these guys, all of these sets belong to, because they were built by algebra, they're what we call imaginatively. The algebraic numbers, okay? The complex numbers are what we call an algebraically closed set. Algebraically closed. Meaning that when you construct equations with these complex numbers, you can stay, the answers stay within the complex numbers. Whether, whereas I can create equations with other kinds of numbers and get out of there. All of these are made with counting numbers, right? Okay, so this fundamental idea that I can have a negative number underneath the square root. And it isn't just like meaningless, like you just ignore it, okay? Actually, it's something that I can work with. That's the basic assumption we're going to run with, and it's going to be one heck of a ride. Okay, so, new subheading, complex arithmetic. As it turns out, complex numbers, despite how weird they sound, like you can't do operations, sorry, you can't do measurements on them, like, oh, how far is i centimeters it doesn't quite work like that 
We can do operations on them just like we can with any of the other numbers, okay? With some interesting other conclusions. In the same way that, you know, all the rules you know for normal counting numbers, rational numbers, etc., they apply to irrational numbers, sort of, right? So for instance, if you uh, multiply together um, two counting numbers, like say, two times three, right? That's the same as three times two. You agree with that? Right? And if you take, you know, thirds, you can say the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, that's still the same as the square root of 3 times the square root of 2. So these rules apply, but not all of them apply, right? For instance, 2 plus 3 is equal to a number, right? 5. But the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 doesn't equal the square root of 5, right? Because something different is happening with these numbers, okay? So we can't simply take everything that we know and apply them here. As you will see, uh, let's quickly rehearse it. As you will see, things quickly start to break down if you try and do this, right? Oops, I skipped a step. Sorry. Okay, so the rules apply, but they don't, and we have to be a little bit careful with them, which is why there's this whole idea, this whole other branch called complex arithmetic. Okay? So, first, let's lay down some notation and some definitions. I need a new color. Let's so put it this way. Yeah. Isn't that like half correct? Because the square root of 1 is also half minus. Ah, uh, so, okay. So, so, in case you wanted to know, right? The reason why this is starting to break down is because we are working into, we're walking into complex territory here. Um, 1 is equal to minus 1 times minus 1. That's okay, right? The square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 really is negative 1. That's okay. Where the problem is, is here. Now the question is why, and we will get to that as we unpack complex arithmetic a little bit further. Okay, so... Here we go, let's start. Um, I'm going to introduce to you the basic number, the basic pronoun we use for indicating all complex numbers. Just like when you've got an unknown in real numbers, we use x. When you've got an unknown and you're in complex number land, we use z. Um, I am going to highly, highly encourage that you put a dash through all of your z's so you do not think that they are twos, okay? Believe me, you only need to lose one mark to realize why do I write my z's like twos. Just save yourself the trouble and put a dash through it. Okay? So complex numbers are in this form. x plus i, y. What does that mean? Um, x is that real number, just like you've been using real numbers before. It can be positive, negative, um, rational, a square root. That's all fine. Then you've got, in addition to this real part over here, You've got a part which is a multiple of this guy, right? A multiple of square root of minus one. Now, when I first started learning about complex numbers, I was like, why, why square root of minus one? Why not square root of minus two or minus three or whatever? And the reason why is because everything is a product, every imaginary number is a product of the square root of minus one. For instance, the square root of negative two, right, is really just the square root of two times the square root of minus one. Right? That's actually okay. So this is the square root of 2 times i. So I can write every square root of a negative number in terms of this one. So this is our, like a fundamental piece, if you like. So, let me get rid of that because I'll need that space. I've got a real part, and I've got this part over here which is imaginary. You've got two pieces to it, and they don't mix together. They're a bit like when you've got a number, like, let's go back in um, irrational land. If I had 2 plus root 3, this is an irrational number. Right? But I can't, I can't mix those bits together. They stay apart. They're like oil and water, just like this real and imaginary bit. Okay? So we call this guy the x. We call him the real component of Z. Okay? R-E being our abbreviation for real. Okay? The real part of Z is just x. It's equal to x. Okay? Likewise, there's an imaginary part, this part. The imaginary part of z is just y, okay? So it's the size of the imaginary part. It doesn't include an i in it, okay? Yeah, it's like the magnitude of it, right? Now, being that you've got these two parts and they're separate to each other, that's why z, despite being one number, he's one number with, he's not just simple. He's got, you know, complexity to him, hence complex numbers, okay? All they mean is, there's more than just a simple number going on here. There's, there's, there's two parts to it, okay? 
So a little bit of extra language here. If the real part of a complex number, the real part of a complex number, if it's zero, if it's zero, right? I've got zero plus just an imaginary part, right? So we call that purely imaginary. There's no real part to it, okay? And conversely, if I go over here and I say, if the imaginary part is zero, then the number is purely real. There are no bits to it that have eyes flying around. So I guess by pure, we mean it's undiluted. There are no extra bits hanging around, okay? One last bit here. Z is equal to x plus, it's just adding, i, y. X and Y themselves are real numbers, okay? So I'm just going to put over here on the side, X and Y belong to the set of real numbers, okay? So this is why I said, you know, this is the right time. You need to know this notation for all the different sets because you need to know what numbers they're talking about, right?